multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. Right now, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air. And after this, I'm going to come back and let you know how you may obtain a copy of today's message. So until I should see you again on this air, God bless you and keep you. Get ready to be blessed. Open your Bible. I'm not going to biblical usages for money. First thing I told you was number one, to support the kingdom. Number two was to pay your tithes, pay your, pay, yeah, support the kingdom. Number two, pay your taxes. Because Jesus said pay your tithes and your taxes too. Number three, money is, God gives us money so we can pay our personal debts. Amen. Personal debts. The Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. So God wants us to be financially responsible. You don't go out and make bills and have no intention and don't pay them. That's how people ruin their credit. And you know, and in this country, praise God, you got to have credit to kind of just move around. You may not want a credit card, but you need one for times like when you need to rent a car or book a hotel room. That don't mean you got to use it if you just pay it off before it comes due. It's like you never had it. Are oh, you understanding what I'm saying? So, so you got to protect your credit because the Bible talks about how a good name is better than silver and gold. Now, don't, don't go for any of these trick games or gimmicks. I guess I'm right here because it's the Holy Ghost. What people tell you, they can repair your credit. Credit cannot be repaired. You can rebuild it, but you cannot repair it. Did you get that? Some of y'all didn't even write that down. You would pay a financial advisor $150 just to tell you that. So don't let nobody tell you or charge you for rebuilding your credit. They can't do it. That's a gimmick. That's game. Way to take your money. And that three hundred and fifty or hundred and fifty dollars they gave you gave them, you could have sent it on the bill. Yeah. But don't go out and make bills. You wouldn't want nobody to come get your money and don't want to pay you back. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Some of y'all will make the news around here and buy some money on drug on. He owe me fifty cent, man. I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> So you don't do that. He wants us to pay our debts. Oh no, everybody say, oh no man, oh, no. nothing but to love it. See, I really believe God wants to move us into a place of debt freedom. See, because it's stuff on your heart and your mind. Man, I just stepped into something. It's stuff on your heart and your mind you want to do and accomplish and achieve. But one of the main reasons why you can't do it because you're so much in debt. Good secret, good secret. When he gets you out of debt, don't go back in. Okay? Now, I guess I'm just here. We're going to attack this thing. Look, on the credit card, this is how you start getting out of debt. You find first the smallest bill that you have. Pay that one off. A little bit out of time, but pay it off. When that credit card or whatever that is gets paid off, keep, try to keep it active, but don't use it unless it's extremely necessary. Then you go and attack another bill. Some bills you're going to have for a little while unless you get what they call a windfall or some kind of financial miracle or you come into an inheritance, you know, like house notes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a house cost $100,000 except something happened for you supernaturally. God bless you. It's going to be unlikely that you'll be able to just go in there and just drop $100,000 at one time. We believe it can happen. Amen. But see, you got to have, that's why I'm going, hopefully today if I get enough time, about your faith to make that thing happen. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, faith is my trigger. Faith is my trigger. See, because I could come here and teach you, I'm already in my message, every week, uh, every week, week in, week out, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we could come here every day of the week if you want to, but if you don't believe anything that the preacher, you watch on television, listen to the radio, or sit under that ministry is saying, then how many know you can't have what they're talking about? Somebody say, faith is my trigger. I'm going somewhere. But so you want to work on that bill. When you get down paid, then you're going to attack your another one. Don't try to go at the big ones. That's right. Amen. That's right. I'm, I got Bible for bad. Though your beginning be small, your latter end should greatly increase. So, you, you know, I know you need Dillard's, J.C. Penney's. Yeah. Belts. Yeah. Somebody, even Kmart got credit card now. No, they, no, they got rid of it. Yeah, they used to have one. They did have a credit card that came up a little while back, I remember. 
It, it was amazing to me. Oh, y'all gonna get full credit on him? <laughs> Mr. Sam Walton. But you attack those bills that you can see and handle. It, it's like when your faith is learning how to operate in faith, it's like this. You have to set obtainable goals. You don't go out talking about you in faith, believing for a million dollars, and you couldn't believe for a hundred thousand. See, some people think faith just grows automatically. But faith has to be processed through, that's right. See, so I, I'm processing now, getting out of debt, so I can live my dreams. Now, it's going to take discipline. Everybody say self-discipline. To move into this arena. Because now all of my bad compulsive buying habits, I have to discipline them. So no longer can I just go to the store and just go on a spending spree or spend money that I don't have. Write this down. Credit is spending money that you don't have. See, when you flowing and using credit like that, then you really got to have faith. Because you just spent some money that you didn't physically have. And by the 30th, the 28th, the 15th, or wherever the due date is, your faith had to manifest that payment. So if I don't know how to operate in faith for my finances, you no, know, nobody won't talk about faith in their finances, but I need faith for my finances. Because every month, there's people calling me about a bill. If they're not calling me, it came in the mail, so to me, that's just like calling. So from one period of time to another period of time, I got to release faith to meet that need. Now watch. If you already know everything you got to have, let's just do it real quick. Just a quick, quick sketch of a budget. Light, gas, water, rent or mortgage, car payment, lease insurance on the car, then insurance on your life. So we already talked about seven categories of things that every month I got to be releasing faith for. So, so now you understand, get Hebrews 11 and 6, it's like since somebody, y'all looking at me like he ain't gave us no scripture. I'm, I'm talking scripture. Brother Daphne, I'm talking scripture. I'm talking scripture. All right, read it. Hebrews 11 and 6. There it is up there, but I'm going to let you read it. Ready to read it. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I, you have to live a lifestyle of faith on purpose, Robert. I have to get up every morning of my life knowing that God is going to meet my need. Now, some people are stuck at just getting their need met. But I want to move into another arena. I want the desires of my heart. And I can have them because he said if I delight myself in him, he would give me. See, so, so most folk stuck on, you know, you heard this, the Lord promised to meet your need. He promised you some other things too. But all the gifts and the promises of God are received through faith. Somebody say faith is my trigger. All right, watch this. Let's, let's do this real quick. Come on. So we worked on them bills. So each one I set obtainable goals, even with my faith. Let's say, I don't know. You want to move towards this owning the car you always dreamed about. But notice what I said. You want to move towards it. So what kind of car can I drive now? So I have to set my faith on obtaining what I can obtain now. Because now faith is. So now watch. Once I get this one, I got to act like this one is the one I'm dreaming about. The house, if I'm believing God for a bigger house, Steve, the, the house that I'm in now, I got to treat it like it's already the mansion. Yeah. Come on. Get in position. Come on. See, 
So, so now what am I doing? Write this down. I'm focusing my faith. So because faith is a go-getter. It, it has to have something that it goes and get. It's like a golden retriever. I shoot it, but the dog go out there and get it and bring it back to me. Watch. If the dog got to go out and swim in the lake, he going to get it. If he had to run through the woods and run the deer down, he going to show me where the deer is. I turn them loose, they're going to take me to the coon. Them beagles going to jump them, them, squir them rabbits and them squirrels every time. My faith is my golden retriever, man. It is my go-getter. Come on, say it. My faith, my faith is my go-getter. Go now do this, do this, and faith is my trigger. Faith faith is my trigger. Click, click, my click. Faith. See? Because I could teach you from now that Jesus come. But if you don't believe nothing I'm teaching you, you can't receive it. Come on, say faith is my trigger. Come over here, Hebrews. Y'all don't believe me. Let me show you this. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to go and dive right on in it. Y'all, we're going to read those first couple of verses now. We're going to take our time with it because, see, it's going to be, I'm going to drop something so heavy on you in a few minutes, I'm going to have to leave. I'm, I'm serious, because I'm going to need your spirit man in a certain place to even receive what I'm saying to you. Write this down. There are three dimensions to your spiritual diet. The Bible says, as babes desire the sincere milk of the word. So milk is for babies. He said, but meat is for them that are full age. That means they have matured. But then there's revelation. Revelation knowledge is for them that spend time with the Holy Ghost. Now, we can, we, we can regress it just like we progressed it. Because what is milk but petrified meat? Milk is meat before it's meat. It has all the protein, calcium, niacin, all of the beneficial things that a steak has in it. And we know this process can be reversed because now they got these machines like the, the Ninja and, and the, 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 the juice makers where you put solids in it. And it, and it pulses and it turns the solid into a liquid. So then, what was solid became liquid. Watch it though. That means what was liquid, liquid became. That's right. Amen. Think about your human anatomy. You was liquid before you was muscle and bone. Before you got birth, water had to break. Come on, let's read. Watch this now. Take your time with it. Don't rush. Ready? Read the first verse. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of an inner and his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not come from him, not in faith. Now we're going to stop, because everybody not reading. Faith comes how? So without faith it's impossible to please God, but in order for me to get faith, I got to read this Bible out loud. Because faith comes how? Faith comes how? So this is not a reading drill. I'm not trying to find out how, you, how good you can read. I'm trying to teach you how to operate in the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing. So when I read the word out loud, I get faith for what I hear. Amen. Now say this with me. The Bible, the Bible is God speaking to, speaking to me about me. Amen. So right now when I'm reading this, this is God personally speaking to me. Amen. We're not just reading the Bible. We are reading the Bible, but we are reading what we connote as the Word of God. 
So when I read the word of God out loud, I'm hearing the voice of God. So now you see why it's imperative that I always take time to read the Bible out loud because I want to hear my daddy talk to me. Many people are misguided because their daddies never talk to them. It's because some confused young men and women because their daddies never talk to them. So when I open the Bible and I read the word out loud, my heavenly father is talking to me. Show you how powerful the word of God is. Go back two more chapters. Go to chapter two. I want you to read verse 1 and verse 2. All right? Y'all got it? Amen. I say you got it? Amen. All right? Ready? Read it. an angel in the Bible. There are several angels but one that they, they name all the time. Yeah. Whenever God got ready to send a message to mankind, he used this angel named Gabriel. Amen. Gabriel's name means messenger. So if you name your child Gabriel or Gabriel or Gable, you just called him a messenger yeah. or her a messenger. So don't be surprised if they grow up and start preaching. Amen. You spoke it into their lives. Amen. Ain't nobody in here but me. Yeah. If you name your child Zoe, you expect them to live an abundant life. Because Zoe is Greek for the God kind of life. So that child probably will grow up full of faith. Look at somebody and say, you do know your name means something. So he says, if the word spoken by angels was steadfast. When Gabriel broke through in Daniel chapter 9 or 10, 10 spoke with Daniel, what Gabriel said shortly came to pass. When Gabriel came to Mary, told her she would conceive and bear a son, not knowing a man, the word spoken by the angel came to pass. When he went to Joseph and told her, don't put this woman away, the word he spoke came Look at somebody say the word of God is steadfast. Now, what he wants us to get, get to the place where we really realize is that I need to be resting. Wow, wasn't that word good? You can obtain a copy of today's message by simply calling or writing us or even emailing us at the information that will be located on the screen. Word of Life is a need-meeting church with several opportunities to serve you and your entire family. We have activities for children, youth, teens, adults. I mean, we, we try to touch the total man. We got a gym you can work out in. We got a soup kitchen that's open every Thursday. I'm telling you, there's not a place where you can't serve. So if you're looking for a place to serve, learn, and grow, then consider the Word of Life Community Church. And until next time, on the same station at the same time, remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God, and you'll be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to Power in the Word. To order a copy of today's message, simply write to Power in the Word, 351 Southcraft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Bruton, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Here's the ways that you can stay connected to the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network. You can go to the following websites, www.powerintheword.org or www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also view us on Ustream by going to www.ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash life television.
You can also view us on the Roku channel by clicking on the channel store, going to the category titled New, and clicking on Life Television Network. You can also tune in to Life Radio Network by going to the website www.tunein.com, going to the search bar, typing in Life Radio Network, and there you will find our station. For those of you who are in Chickasaw or the surrounding areas, you can tune in to us on 87.9 FM. You can also stay connected to us by way of social media by going to YouTube, typing in the search bar, Word of Life TV Network. You can also like us on Facebook by going to the search bar and typing in Life TV. You can also follow Dr. Roberts on Twitter by going to www.twitter.com forward slash HWROB2. We here at the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network, thank you for your continued support. Hello, friend. I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent, and that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you, and I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter, and in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers, but most of the time we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God has told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons, and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could convene around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens is iron, so does the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Now it's a time when we can all participate in this. This gives you a great opportunity. If you've been blessed by this broadcast, you may be sitting behind that television screen, internet, or on your screen of your computer saying, what must I do to be saved? I am so glad you asked. It's very simple. Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Call upon me and I will answer you. You know what? He's sitting there waiting for you to call him. All you got to do is pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you. That your word declares that if I will confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I would be saved. Now, God, I renounce the hidden works of the darkness, and I ask Jesus to come into my heart, come into my life, and save me, redeem me. I thank you, God, for my sins being forgiven, and I thank you for coming into my life and saving me. I believe I receive my salvation right now. Wow, it's just that simple. Listen, I want to put a powerful tool in your hand. It's free. If you pray this prayer with me or you're just watching the broadcast and you desire to know more about your salvation, I have a little book I wrote some time ago called 
what is salvation. I want to put a copy of this book in your hand. It can be read in one easy setting. You can share it after you get through with it, leave it in a bathroom, or share it with your friends or your family members. But it talks about what salvation is, what salvation isn't, and how you can obtain salvation and maintain your, your new walk with Christ. I want to welcome you to the family of God, and thank you for tuning in each and every week or however you may watch this broadcast. And I thank you for your support, your prayers, and your seed. God bless you. And keep remembering that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, you be blessed. To receive your copy of the book, What is Salvation? Simply write to Word of Life Community Church, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. Be sure to check your local listings for the days and times that you can view the Power in the Word broadcast. Life Community Church is here to serve you with one church in four locations. In Pritchard, Alabama, located at 1682 South Atmore Avenue, on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. In Chickasaw, Alabama, located at 351 South Craft Highway, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. And in East Bruton, Alabama, located at 111 Florida Certain Avenue, on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. This has been another edition of Power in the Word. On behalf of Dr. Henry and Sherry Roberts and the entire Word of Life Community Church family, we say God bless. Tune in next week to another edition of Power in the Word. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, God bless. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, your number one Christian station. Airways Church of God, located here at 601 Clayton Street. I want to specifically and purposely invite you to come and to be a part of what God is doing here at Rice Temple. I'm your pastor here, Bishop Gregory S. Cannon. You can come and join us at 9.30 a.m. for Sunday school and at 11 o'clock a.m. for our morning worship. And each Sunday night, first, third, and fifth Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Also, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. is our intercessory prayer hour, and at 7 o'clock is our Bible study. We want to invite you to come and bring your children, because at 7 o'clock each Wednesday, we also have what we call YPLJ, Young People Love and Joy Band, where our young people are taught the Word of God, and we share with them in their own setting. So we want to invite you to come to be with us here at Rice Temple. You can reach us by telephone at 334-262-8452. God bless you. Come be with us.
We want to invite you to stay tuned for the next one hour for what God is going to do in this service. We thank God for you watching us here. And we want you to tune in because God is doing marvelous things. And we want to invite you to come to Rice Temple and enjoy a live service. That's a big question because sometimes when God calls upon us, we have to make preparation. But I got news for you, God looking for some prepared folk. That if he call you at the drop of a hat, you'll be ready to go. That's the whole reason why we serve the Lord like we do, day in and day out. And the reason we come to church and seek Sunday school, Bible study, or every avenue that gives us a little more increased knowledge of the word. Because what we are doing, we are preparing ourselves for the use of the master. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I look at it that way because I know that if you don't prepare yourself, you can't be made to look like a fool. Amen. And that's not only in God thing, that's in anything. Why don't you get your Bible, Psalm 126. I'm going to read a few verses there. And I'm going to later reference another text that I want to deal with today. Psalm 126 and 1 says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were likened unto, unto them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing. And then said they among the heathens, The Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Yes. Turn again, O captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow it in tears shall reap in joy. And he that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing in his sheaves with him. Somebody say amen. amen. And you might be seated at the conclusion of that text. I want to talk from a little brief subject. And this is, I'm only going to give you a preview of a coming attraction. And if you want to hear the conclusion of the matter, you might have to follow me off somewhere. But I want to deal with this tonight, today rather. It's about to happen. I want you to touch somebody and tell them it's about to happen. What's about to happen? What God said. It's about to happen. When I look at this text and look at the writing of the Psalms, this is a song that the pilgrims of the Lord had written in a time of prayer for freedom to worship in Zion again. Notice that the text deal with when they were taken into Babylon and they were taken in captivity and they had done some things and I need you to get me Psalm 137 I want to read that. I want you to read that for me in just a minute. They were taken in captivity and they felt like that it was all over. But how many of y'all know even when it feel like it's over, it ain't over yet? Sometimes the devil have written a eulogy on our lives when God said it's not even time for the eulogy. It's time to live. It's time to go forward. It's time to look for greater. 
Now y'all, that girl sang that song that talk about he's bigger, and then somebody says he's greater. And you got to understand that is now, not in the future. Not in heaven, but the greater things are now. And the bigger things of God ought to be now. We live in a time where we have expectations of life for a whole lot of things, but not for the things of God as we ought to. I believe every believer ought to come in the presence of God, whether it's in the house of God or wherever it is, you ought to look for greater. You ought to look for things to happen that God declared in this word that would happen. And don't be so negative in your thinking and always talking about things always happen for other people, but don't nothing happen for me. That sounds like a seed of doubt to me. And you ought to have faith in God that whatever he said he's going to do, he's going to do it. When I look at this text again, and uh, they began to talk about how the Lord will turn again the captivity of Zion. And that they... Uh, themselves were like in a dream. Sometimes life can be almost like a dream to some of us. We wonder how in the world did I get here and when will I wake up out of this situation? Have y'all ever been there? You, you, you're going through so much stuff sometimes and so many things look like working against you and you saying to yourself, Lord, how did I get here? What happened? You question your own self and say, what did I do? Did I do anything? Did I say anything? Because, Lord, if I did, I'll go back and tell you I'm sorry. I'll repent. Come on now. I will repent if I did anything. But sometimes it's what's called life. Life brings on some things that are somewhat tragic and sometimes uh, even with a lack of understanding of how we even got there. But I want you to understand that God is a God that turns things. You know, we look for his children to be in sorrow, to suffer, to go through. We're going to have to suffer a little while, but I believe even Peter addressed that. He said, after you suffered a while, then the Lord will build you up. He will establish you. Oh, come on, somebody. But he said, after you suffered a while. That's why I told you to tell your neighbors about to happen. Now, I'm not waiting 20 years down the road. I'm not going to wait another 15 years. It's about to happen now. Amen. It's in the now. Why? Because my faith is in the now. See, if you stop looking for stuff 20 years down the road and talking about, I don't know when, and I don't know how, I don't know when and how either, but I know it's about to happen. The children of Israel in this text have been taken into Babylon and they got in a sad condition when they got in Babylon. Psalm 137, read that. By the rivers of Babylon. Listen what they said. When we got in Babylon, we were singing out down by the rivers. There we sat down. Look here, we lost all our strength. Our energy was depleted and we sat down. Yea, we wept. And we cried. We sat there by the river weeping and crying and, and almost at a point of giving up. Read. We wept when we remembered Zion. And we wept when we remember Zion. What about Zion? Zion was the high place of God, and Babylon was the low place of the enemy. So when you think about Zion, Zion was the place that they worship, the place or the condition of their life that they could serve God and give God the glory and lift him up. You know, some of us, when we in Zion, we'll sing our heart out. We are praised till we break a shoe heel. Y'all ain't going to help me. We are praised till we sweat our hair dudes out. You are praised to look like everything in you have left you. But when you get in Babylon, you want to sit down and cry. So the text deal with them saying that when we were in Babylon, we sat down, we wept when we remembered the high place of God. When we remember Zion, you know, sometime in life, you can think back on your high points of your life when you had it going on when you thought you was all that with the pips and the pickle. Yeah. Amen. You know, that time in all our lives, we can look back and say, you know, I remember when. Come on now. You remember when you was a 12 and not a 22? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember when I was a 32 and not a 46. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. 
Sometimes you want to go back to them days and, and sometimes you almost look in the mirror and weep and say, what happened to me? <laughs> well, I'm going to wake you up some kind of way. <laughs> they wept, they cried, they went through when they remembered Zion. But I got news for you today, you don't have to remember Zion, but you can go back to Zion. You can go back to the place of your praise, the place of your crying to God, the place of your rejoicing. See, too many of us living in Babylon need to come out and go to the place where God ordained. Read on for me. We hanged our hearts upon... Not only did we weep and cry, our musical instruments now are hanging in the trees. Right. Read. We hanged our hearts upon the willows in, uh -huh. the, midst thereof, in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive. And notice something else, the one that God allowed. Now remember, they didn't just go into Babylon on their own. God allowed them to be captive because of the condition that they were living. They were not living in the place God told them to live. They were not pleasing God anymore. And God allowed them to be captured by the Babylonians. And because now they are in Babylon, they say the one that captured and carried us away, they require a song of us. Read. And they that wasted us. And they that wasted us. Required, required of us. Required of us burn. Saying, uh -huh. sing us one of those songs you know, of Zion. it's kind of pitiful to have the enemy to take you in captivity and bound you up. And now say, sing me one of them happy songs. You know, some folk done put you in a mess and want you to be happy in your mess. They down there talking about, won't you sing one of them church songs? Why don't you sing one of them good old songs that lift you up now? Well, you got to remember something. There is a place called Zion, and in Zion I could praise the Lord, but I'm in Babylon. I come to tell somebody today, even though you might be in Babylon, you ought to still have a song. I, I remember this text so clearly, and I was resting a few minutes ago. The devil didn't want me to remember because I was a young man, and I was going through some stuff, and the Lord gave me this 137th song. In other words, I had hung my harp on the willow tree. I began to weep and cry and have pity parties and act like I was the only one going through. And I'm in my mid-twenties at this time, and I'm saying, God, why am I crying? Why am I weeping? Why am I laying? my heart in the willow tree and God gave me the scripture to remind me to get up out of the place of your weeping, get out of the place of your water and rise up and go back to Zion. Zion is the place of praise and praise of, of rejoicing is the place of my joy. Somebody here this morning, you better tell the devil it's about to happen. I'm about to go back. And somebody ought to hit the neighbor and tell them I'm about to have a flashback. Get ready, dog. I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm going to have a flashback when I was in the place of praise, where I knew I could praise God. Because, listen, this ain't the first time I've been down. This ain't the first time I've been in a mess. This is not the first time I've cried. This ain't the first time I heard it. It's about to happen again. I'm about to give God the glory right down here in Babylon. Oh, God. I can't give the baby all this milk bottle today. I'm going to give as much as I can. He said, there, they carried us away. <laughs> and then told us to sing one of them was high in song. Read on, son. What you say? How shall we sing the Lord's song? But look at here. He said, I'm down in Babylon. How can I sing a happy song in Babylon? See, some of us got to realize as they cried in the beginning of the text, they just were crying because they was in a bad place. They were down in Babylon. They were being mocked by the heathen. The heathen was saying the Lord had done great things for them. How many of y'all know folk mock you when you're going through? She ain't shouting today. He ain't dancing today. He ain't running no house today. But tell the devil, it's about to happen again. It's about to happen. I'm about to break loose. I'm about to lose my mind. I may not have every eye dotted and every T crossed, but it's about to happen again. Lord, have mercy. I wish I'd preach like I feel out of my soul. 
You see, they were crying and they were going through, but God had another side to the going through. Say, let me come tell you something today. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter how bad it is, hold on to your praise. Hold on to your joy. Don't let the devil take your joy. He may take the smile off your face, but the word said the joy of the Lord remained in us. He can't get down in your soul and get your joy out. He can say discouraging things. He can say things to hurt your feelings, but my joy whew, is still alive. And they go on and say, they want us to sing the song, but he said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? In other words, I'm on a strange people. You know, folk will mess you up and they want you to be happy. Oh, come on now. They'll talk crazy to you, expect you still to love them. Expect you still to act like a young I ain't gonna help me up in here. You can't keep on talking crazy to me and looking for me to hell, hold your hand and hug your neck and say I love you. Come on now. It takes up for me to do that. That your very captain require you to give me a song. Sing me a song. But how they say can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I'm in a place unfamiliar with my praise. I'm in a place that don't understand my hand waving. Sometimes the devil will mess you up so bad to look like you can't even lift your hand. He put you in a place where you don't see nobody doing what you're doing. Ain't nobody praising like you praise. Every time you throw your hand up, they look at you like you're crazy. When you holler hallelujah, they say something wrong with her. She about to have a nervous breakdown. You ought to tell the devil, no, I'm not about to have a next breakdown. It's about to happen again. I'm about to have a flashback. I'm about to think about when the Lord delivered me, when he bought me out before, when he healed me before. Tell the devil, I'm about to have a flashback on you. Oh, God. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. Read the Bible. I'm, I'm almost if done. I forget thee, uh -huh. O Jerusalem. He said, look, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem. Let my right hand forget her cunning. Uh -huh. If I do not remember thee. If I don't remember you. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. See, Jerusalem was where the church was. And they said, look, if I forget where the church is, if I forget where my beginning was, if I forget where my foundation is, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. In other words, don't let me say another word. But because I remember, because I remember where I got my joy back, when I got my joy back, because I remember how God delivered me for the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth time. He said, look at here. If I don't give him praise, let my tongue cleave to the roof. But oh God, because I remember, I think I'll give him a praise. I think I'll lift him up. Why are you going to lift him up? I've been weeping. I've been crying. The psalm is saying here, because we hung our Harp up. I got a flashback. Go let me get my heart back. Somebody, you stop praising him because of what you're dealing with. But you ought to reach back and get your praise back. Somebody, put the tambourine down. You don't even bring it to church no more. You ought to go get your tambourine and tell the devil, I think I'll shake it again. Shake that thing for me, daughter. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Somebody done put theirs in the box and said, I ain't taking the church no more. I'm not going there shaking nothing. As bound as I am, as in trouble as I am. But you better go back, get your heart off that willow tree. Tell the devil, I'm going to praise him because it's about to happen again. I'm about to get another breakthrough. I'm about to get another breakout. Can you say yeah? Say yeah!
Somebody ought to slap your hand and pray. Listen, when you remember God and go back to your praise, <laughs> said, I'm not going to give no Babylonian praise. See, in Babylon, they had given up on God. They stopped singing. They stopped beating them tambourine. They stopped playing on the harp. But all of a sudden, somebody said, wait a minute. We better get out of this place. We better lift them up. Psalm 138. He said, I will pray me with my whole heart before God. I will sing unto thee. I will worship for the holy temple. Somebody, you need to wake up today. Go back to Zion. Cause in Zion, that's where you worship God. In Zion, that's where you gave him praise. Oh, to tell the devil it's going to happen today. I'm going to give him a praise for what he done to me. I'm going to praise him for bringing me out. Can you say yeah? Somebody jump on your feet and shout yeah. I want you to do something for me right here. Give the Lord about a 30 second praise out of your mouth. Give him my praise. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Somebody said, why are you praising him? Well, David said it like this. David said, when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all he done for me, my soul cried out hallelujah. Somebody need to have a flashback. Say, yes, I'm going through the day. Yes, I'm hurting the day. But I still got to praise down in my soul. I got another yes, Lord. Down in my soul. I got a hallelujah. Down in my soul. Can you say yeah? Say yeah. They remember, they remember Zion. Now let me help y'all. Some of y'all young folk, y'all young folk ain't got no good memory because it ain't happening like it used to happen. But those of us that saw them old mothers in their real glory, they could pray for you and some have them. They could tarry with you and some have them. Ain't a whole lot going on now. I think that how they cried out for us. They prayed that we will be delivered. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Stay with me now. Come on, go pray until the Holy Ghost fell in the church. They didn't have to pray all day. They didn't have to pray all night. But those of us that remember that, how they could lift up a praise. Wrecked the whole house. Didn't have no keyboard. Didn't have no full drum sets. Didn't have no guitar sometimes. But they prayed and, and out of that praise came miracles of deliverance. Miracles of healing. I want somebody that nobody get a flashback now and say, Lord, I thank you for the praise of the saints. I thank you. Somebody that believe in the Lord, slap your hand.
Well, something else they said here. They that sold in tears shall reap in joy. Now let me bring it to the 21st century. How many of y'all been crying on this stuff? We really hope that you were blessed today by the word of God. We want you to come and join us in a live service. I hope if this service today has been a blessing to you and to yours that you will write us and let us know that you are blessed by the word of God, that you are blessed by the anointing that was fallen in the worship service. And you also can obtain a copy of this service of today by writing us at 601 Clayton Street, Montgomery, Alabama, 36104. If you'd like to receive a copy of this service today, you can have it on CD or DVD. Just write us here at Rice Temple at 601 Clayton Street, Montgomery, Alabama, 36104. And include a donation to help us to continue this broadcast. God has been blessing souls in our service. Come be in a live service and experience the powerful move of God that's on this ministry. I believe that God is moving for such a time as this. We realize that there are crises all over the land. But come and share in here at Rice Temple, AOH Church of God with us. I'm your pastor here, Bishop Gregory S. Cannon. God bless you. Until next week this time, you be blessed of the Lord. And remember, there is a word from the Lord. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. Hi, my name is Pastor Wayne Johnson, and we're here today, we're doing a teaching on the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I just want to welcome you to a word, a great teaching that we're going to expound and go into some scripture and kind of lay out a foundation that God want to reveal himself to us in a different way. And we're here in Walnut Hill where our church is Emmanuel Faith Center. And I just want to say thanks for joining us today. And, and I'm excited about what God is doing in these last days. So let's dig into the word of God. And so our foundational scriptures are going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start there. And also after that, we're going to go into um, uh, Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost when the church came. And also we're going to go also in Isaiah 28 verses 11 and 12. And then John 7 and 38. And then we'll end up in uh, Psalms 103, verse 1 through 5. We, we may go a little bit different from those, but these are the foundational scriptures. And you can go back and you can look at them also. You know. And so here we are today. We're talking about the infilling of the Spirit. And so in the beginning, God you know, gave us his word. And chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians talking about the, the gifts of the Spirit. You know. And so I'm going to read uh, probably maybe down to the first 13 verses. And in, and in between that, I may stop and talk a little bit. And so here, here we go. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 1. Not concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by what? The Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. 
There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which what worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And so I want to break there. So a manifestation of the Holy Spirit or the gifts of the Spirit. When we come into that place and the Spirit of God start moving, it's going to profit you. It's going to bless you. It's going to empower you to do some things and break some things and destroy some yokes in your life. So, so when we come to that place and we see the Spirit of God manifesting through prophecy, anytime the gifts of the Spirit are in operation, we benefit. You know? And so, so, so here today, when we know that and we start looking for the plan and the perfect will of God to come forth in our life, it's just been a great blessing. Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, and to by the same Spirit is important. And so it's not three Holy Spirits, it's only what? One Spirit. And so we, as we understand that, it's only one Spirit, but yet still omnipresent, um, all-knowing God. And, and so he can do, he can, he's multitasking millions of things all at the same time because what? He, he is the great and almighty God. And verse 9, to another faith by the same spirit, and to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, and to another the working of miracles, uh, to the another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongue, to another interpretation of tongue. And so I ask you a question. So if God can fill me with the spirit that I pray in tongues, which is one of the gifts of the spirit that's, that's listed here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, so why shouldn't all the other gifts be allowed to be in the church, glory be to God, or be a uh, manifestation come. Because verse, verse 1 said, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And so he said, he told us to desire these gifts, to crave these gifts, to pray and ask God for the gifts to be alive in the church, glory be to God. And so when we do that, we release our faith in the ability that when we pray that we know that our Heavenly Father has what hurt us. And so when we go to Matthew chapter 6, he's talking about the Lord's Prayer. And when we pray in secret, our Father who sees in secret will reward us what openly. And so we see that, 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 that the Lord's Prayer is a very powerful prayer when you go in and you see it. Now you begin to pray from that standpoint of understanding that when we ask God for something, he's not trying to withhold anything from us because we are his seed. We are, the, we are his children. We are the seed of Abraham. Him. And so God wants to empower us to be a blessing to our generation. Because when people are blessed by the gifts and by the power of the Holy Spirit, what's, what, what's, what's the results of it? They want to run toward God. They want to release and give their lives to Christ, glory be to God, that they can live what the abundant life that God what already promised his children. But then I, I begin to ask the question, why is it not given? Why is it so that, we, that some gifts are harder to walk in than others? And so that's my prayer to God, that, that the eyes of our understanding will become open, that we can understand how to receive the blessing of God. Salvation and, and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, and so, so power is in the blessings of the Lord. And so anytime the Lord told me he would profit me and increase me and bless me, glory to God, that means there's power in his word to do exactly what he said. And so my job is to believe what I read, not rationalize it, not try to say what if, or, and, and not understanding the full measure of what he's trying to relate to the church. And, and, and so when we put that if in there and we disqualify ourselves as being a recipient or, or the receiving the blessing of God, it calls us to stumble and fall. Glory be to God. Does that make sense? And so here today that we know that it's the self same spirit, one spirit. And, 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 and so we have so many spirits that's trying to gain access to our lives, but they don't, but they are disembodied spirits. They're not what here legally, so therefore they're trying to gain access to our lives and to all that we have, you know, and so we, we, we disfranchise ourselves. We, we, we push them aside in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. And so hereby we know that, that we have access with God because it, it's by the Holy Spirit. It's only one. 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 One, one, one. And so here we are. Let me go back to verse 11. But all these work of that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. And they call him in the Greek, Alos Paracletus. I, I guess I'm pronouncing that right, you know. And so he's our advocate. He's our helper. He's our standby. He's our intercessor. And, jo and John was said this when, when he had his earthly ministry. He said, there's one standing among you now shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So Jesus 
baptizer. It's the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit comes to give us utterance and unctions in the Spirit. So when he comes upon us, he comes to what fill this, this temple or this void on the inside. And the Bible said, out of our belly shall for what rivers of living water. And so this process is given by faith when you want Jesus to come into your life and let him be Lord of your life. And as you surrender and as you pray and ask God for his blessing to come into your life, he won't withhold none of these gifts because they're gifts. And, then, and if I have a gift, if I want to give you a gift, it's up to you to receive the gift. See, the gift giver is always given, but, but the person that received the gift, he has option. He can what, choose to receive it or reject it. And so a lot of times, and so sometimes we, we, somebody give us a nice gift, oh, you didn't have to do that. Oh, uh, I, I didn't think I was worthy enough to receive the gift. But, but God's opinion of us is that we are what? We're, 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 we're highly favored. And he, he put us on a pedestal because what? Jesus died and suffered and went through so many things on the cross that we can receive the blessings or the gifts or the power and enter into a rest in this time and season that we live in in our life. And so the Bible said we're not destroyed because of the devil. We're destroyed because of the lack of knowledge and insight into his word, Hosea 4 and 6. And so the time that we spend in this word, understanding and receiving and believing God and trusting him. See, patience means when you got to have patience. You know, I, you know, I didn't really understand patience. Patience is when you're standing on God's word and something is trying to move you off the foundation of his word that you're standing on. You need patience or endurance to keep the same mindset and believe God and trust him through that what pressure time that the enemy is placing on your life to move you off your foundation of faith. And so praying in the spirit strengthen us in these weak moments that we are going through in life. That's why we need to be what filled with the spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to Jesus, because you know you're in conflict. You're in a spiritual warfare. You're in a spiritual battle. And as God has gifted the church with one of the greatest gifts that we can, if we do not break down, if we begin to understand that God has given us a weapon of warfare with our tongue by praying in the Holy Ghost, glory to God. Handro sikorabasika. Many people fight us on this thing a bit of the, of the infilling of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but it's a spiritual weapon. It's a weapon that God has given to the church, but if we don't understand how to use our weapons, we go into battle with, what, with carnal weapons against a spiritual enemy, and we are sometimes defeated, glory be to God. But when we understand that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is, is spiritual, is kingdom, is, is binding by God's word that he gives us a spiritual language, that we have the power to communicate with our Heavenly Father, and we speak in an angelic tongue as well. The Bible says, though we speak with the tongue of men and of angels, angels and have not what charity that's why the enemy knows that if we are the strong man and we have power in the name of Jesus glory be to God oh Lord have mercy glory be to God see because it's by one spirit and so let, let me let me let me break off and talk about the strong man part because this is vitally important to what we understand so God created Adam from the dust of the ground correct all right so he blew his life or his zoe or his life created in the image of God. And God gave him power and dominion over all the works of his hand. So basically you say Adam was the God of this world. Does that make sense? Do you agree with me on, on that concept? And so here we are now, you know, Satan rebels against God, kicked out of heaven, him and the third of the angel. And so he find himself in the earth where Adam is what? The strong man or have what? He's the God of this world, Adam with dominion and power and authority. So Satan has no, he lost his place. So now he subdued the serpent and what gets in the serpent and goes to Eve. But yet still he plotted probably a long time on how he would get what he wanted from Adam. And so here he, uh, he goes, talks to Eve and, and said, has God said? So he began to put doubt in her mind about what God said because hallelujah, glory be to God. Uh, does that make sense? And so here he is, he tricks her. And Adam is not deceived, but he willfully give his dominion and power and authority over to Satan. And now Satan becomes the God of what? This world. Glory to God. He becomes the strong man. And so here we are, Adam, strong man first, transferred to Satan. And now Jesus Christ come. They call him the last Adam. Oh, you don't hear me. Glory be to God. And God fills him with or baptizes him in the spirit of the river of Jordan. And the Holy Spirit comes upon him. And God makes a decree. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. 
hear ye him. And so for a long time as I was a preacher, I thought he was just speaking to the people that were at the baptism. But no, he was speaking to all the creation that he made. And he was telling them, he was telling the rocks, he was telling the wave, the sea, the wind, the fig tree, sickness and disease, Satan and every angel and everything that he ever made. Glory be to God. He was telling them and making a decree to them that the, these things. Things that had not, that, 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 that they understood the voice of God. He was saying and making decree. This is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. And so when he made that decree, everything had to obey the creator. Glory be to God. And so we see sickness had to obey. We see demons. We see fig trees. We see everything that physically Jesus spoke to. Physically, hallelujah, glory be to God. Physical things that he spoke to, hallelujah. Human things that he spoke to. Environmental things that he spoke to. Everything that he spoke to. Even death, when he spoke to death, death had to obey him. And so therefore God's decree and God's word was so found, so profound that what all creation had to obey him. And that's why God give us these things, what we call working or flowing in the realm of the spirit. And so much carnality has entered into the church. Hallelujah, glory to God. We need to return back to the foundation that God has said, hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, does that make sense? And so here we are today. We are understanding that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is spiritual. It's a pure language. It's not defiled like our language. It, when you pray in the spirit, it's no, it's no cursing in that language because it's a pure language given by God to his people. So every other earthly language that man has a part in, it has curse word. It has things that you can say that, that's, that's not a pure language, glory to God. So rambo korabaka. And so therefore God's language is given by the spirit. And when we pray in it, it profits me. It blesses me. But yet and still, sometimes because the mind does not what understand what's going on and it's trying to figure out and trying to understand. So we form an opinion about what God is trying to do in my life. And therefore, sometimes it, it, it interferes and hinders the blessings or the flow of God in my life. Does that make sense? And so God is saying in verse 11, going back to 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 12, verse 11, he said, but all these work of that what one and self-same spirit divided into every man severally as he will. So these things are divided unto us by what the Holy Spirit. And so if the Holy Spirit is, is the one that gives and, and imparts these gifts, so who should I ask? I should ask him about what doing the impossible in my life. And so here we are today, you know, we, we, we just got into a short version of this, of this message, but we're going to have part two, part three, and, and maybe part four going into it. Stay tuned for part two of the infilling of the Holy Ghost and praying in the Spirit with the Emmanuel's Faith Center, and I'm Pastor Wayne Johnson. My name is Pastor Wayne Johnson. Welcome to the sec second segment of our teaching, the infilling of the Holy Ghost and the baptism or praying in the Spirit. And so we're excited today to take you into the, the, the second part of it where we begin to talk about the principles of God's Word, empowering us to do what we can't do. Because when we understand who we are and we know that God is with us, we make a decree on the promises and the prophetic Word that the Holy Spirit is the one that what comes to energize or stir up the gifts of the spirit and we talked about in the last segment we talked about that we are the strong men and so if you do not understand this principle about being the strong man so when attacks of the enemy come you you'll start looking at yourself as the weaker one rather than what the strong man and so when we go there and we, we look at Matthew chapter 12, I believe that that's, that's where that comes from, glory be to God. When we look at, at the principles of God's word, that we are the strong men and women of God. And so now the enemy, Satan, Jesus operated on the, the law. And so from Genesis to, to, to John was the law. And after the resurrection, after he rose again, then that's when we, we, we go back when he rose again in 40 days of teaching to the disciples. And he told them to go and tarry to Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. 
And so when Satan found out that we all going to be millions and billions of people being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that, 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 that rose, that, that pulled Jesus and, and, and rose and, and brought him back to life, hallelujah, when he was in that dead state, glory be to God, that same Holy Spirit now is inside of us, empowering us, giving us the, the, the wisdom, the strength, and the knowledge and the ability to do exactly what Jesus did. Lord have mercy to Jesus. Do, oh, does that make sense? So when we understand this principle, we got to understand who we are. So now my concept is that if I am less than Satan, well then, therefore, sometimes my thinking is I cannot overpower someone that's stronger than me. It's like a bully. Most people that bully you, they are they think they have strong they, 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 the contents of their character. It, it, it makes you what feel less than. But Lord, have mercy to Jesus. Let, let me go back, Let me, because I want to lay this down to you. The scripture said, how can you enter into a strong man's house and bind him except you be what stronger than him? I'm paraphrasing, glory to God. And so therefore, Jesus Christ became what? The strong man. Everything that God made obeyed the voice of Jesus Christ. Because, Lord have mercy. Ooh, I feel good today. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and, and so when we go to uh, Matthew chapter 12 and starting at verse 9, when he departed hence, he went into the synagogue, and behold, there was a man which had what, a withered hand. And he asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might what, accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that have one shepherd, one sheep, and if he fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much more then? How much more then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore is it lawful to do what well on the Sabbath day? Then said the man, Stretch forth thy hand, and he stretched it forth, and it was what restored whole like unto what to the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and what a great multitude what followed him, and he healed them all. Now, in this context, later on down, we see where 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 they they uh, they talked about in verse twenty eight. He said, "But this is what they said." And uh, let me go let me go right here. Let me go to verse twenty four. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, "This fellow doeth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils." And Jesus knew their what thoughts. Now, let me show you something. That's very important when you're reading scripture. He said he knew their thoughts. So whatever thing you're thinking about, whatever thing you let have access in your thought life, it dominates the, 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 the place and the place that you're trying to go in life. Because your thoughts reveal what, what's really on the inside. Glory be to God. Because the scriptures say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So here we are. Jesus knows our thoughts, even the words we're going to say before we even say them. Glory be to God. So this is vitally important when you, when you go there. And he said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to what? Desolation. So when you become the strong man, and we became the strong man when Jesus rose from the dead on the third day with all power and glory in his hand, now the thing switch. Now the enemy is trying to spoil our house, trying to get us not to see that we are the strong men and women that God has anointed with his spirit and with his power. Glory be to God. We have been restored back to that rightful place when God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. Uh, does that make sense? Do you, do, do you feel me? Do, do you begin to understand? Now, when I get that concept and that concept is inside of me, then my, 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 my imagine, my image of myself now turns to what God said rather than what I feel and what I sense. Glory be to God. Does that make sense? Because see, when you're sensing wrong, perception and truth are totally two different things. You can perceive something to be true and it's not true. See, because most people live from a place of perception. What they think determines where they go in life. Glory be to God. And, and perception can be wrong and not what related to truth with God's word. So when you think that you can't do anything, let, let, let me break it down like this. Sometimes when Christians say his name and, and they make that decree out of their mouth, something from down here rises up and resists that which is coming out of their mouth. And, and I, can, I can give you an illustration if you follow me. If you make this decree right here, you say, I'll never be broke another day in my life. And when you make that decree and you begin to say that out of your mouth, 
instantly with a lot with a, with 99% of the people that say that you'll feel something from your lower belly or your inner man rise up and resist that word that just came out of your mouth that's a faith confession that's what God said my barrel marrow will never go empty I'll never be broke another day in my life God will supply and sustain me in every area of my life when you make those faith confessions then that thing comes up and rises up against you to what reject what just came out of your mouth that's your core belief. That's what you really believe. And that's why the Word of God tells us to renew our mind. And, and when we renew our mind with the Word, it, it, it delinquishes that voice. And that voice no longer rises up against us when we're starting to decree God's Word. And therefore, a lot of people, when they say the name and they make a decree about Satan, and, and so therefore that thing rises up inside of them, and, 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 and sometimes they get afraid. But I want to let you know today, God's Word is true. You've got to settle that in your mind. If it's true and, and the weapon that He's given, in us is is the sword of the spirit is the gifts of the spirit or the holy spirit coming to live on the inside of us manifesting himself through us in a lot of ways by praying in the spirit and delivering and that we speak mysteries unto god that we are created in the image of god and we walk and we do kingdom blessings and kingdom work we communicate with a pure language unto god and therefore that language of the spirit is given it's, it's a blessing it's a gift of god and so therefore when my heavenly father has given Gifted me with something, I cherish it with 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 with, with unconditional gloves, our hands of gloves, glory be to God, because I understand that He's given me something, and sometimes you can receive something from your father or from our, and you don't even realize the value of what we have, glory to God. And so here we are today, and Jesus is what fighting against demonic powers through men, because the scriptures say our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness and high places. So now, let's go back to Matthew 12, and let me begin to explain about this what position of authority and dominion that God has given us, and now we are what the strong men. So we talked about earlier, the old covenant from Genesis to John, right? And Jesus operated under the old covenant when he was here. And the New Testament came, what, after he died and rose the third day with all power and glory in his hand. Glory be to God. So therefore, now he came back, 40 days of teaching to the disciples. And after that, they all met 500 brethren. And he said, go and tear in Jerusalem till you be endued with what? Power from on high. Glory be to God. And so here we are. Jesus is setting a principle and his word. And he's showing us something if we can what, see this. And listen to what he said. And they, and they were saying some things about Jesus, and the Bible said he what, knew their thoughts in verse 25. And every kingdom, and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall what, not stand. And the Bible said, that's, that's powerful within itself. I'm going to come back to it. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself, how then shall his kingdom stand? So we pray the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, is in heaven. So here we are, kingdom principles are coming to the church through by what mysteries are praying in the spirit. So God said, we speak mysteries unto God. I pray with the spirit, I pray with the understanding. I sing with the spirit, I sing with the understanding. So though we speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, it what profit us nothing. So here we are that we have an opportunity to what see into the kingdom. Lord, have mercy to Jesus. The mysteries of the kingdom are now revealed unto the children of God when we know and go after kingdom blessings and kingdom principles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That when, when I know who I am in Christ, when I know that God has given me power and authority to trade upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing and no wise shall what hurt or harm us. That's what God said. And so now we, 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 we know that, that, that thou kingdom come, thou will be done on on earth as it is in heaven. Now, hold on. I'm going to show you something. Listen to what it said. And, and verse 26, I read that. And, and verse 27. If I, he said, if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Verse 28, listen to this. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. We pray that Lord's Prayer all the time. Jesus said, if I'm casting out devils by what? The finger of God, the kingdom of God has come unto you. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we pray that all the time, glory be to God. And listen to verse 29. Or else how can one enter into a, 
enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except he first bind the strong man, then he will what, spoil his house, glory to God. So we are the people that God called and commissioned us to do. And that's why praying in the spirit is so vitally important. It's a weapon that God has given to the church. So when you go to Ephesians chapter 6, he talks about putting on the whole armor of God. But at the last part, he said, praying always with all prayer in the spirit, you know, petition and supplication unto God, that we speak what mysteries unto God. So when you pray in the spirit, the spirit of God, hallelujah, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. So, so the gifts of the spirit are the power of the Holy Spirit. This has been the Emmanuel Faith Center broadcast with Pastor Wayne Johnson. If this broadcast was a blessing to you, we would like for you to partner with us. You can partner with us with the monthly seed of $25. We are located at 9501 Highway 97, Walnut Hill, Florida. For this and other teachings by Pastor Johnson, please visit our website at www.efcenter.org. Tune in next week for another exciting time in the Word of God. And may God continue to richly bless your lives is our prayer. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Brooklyn, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Give your child the education they need at Word of Life Life Institute Christian School. We have a full-scale educational program serving grades K-1 through K-12. We utilize an acceleration Christian education curriculum that allows your child to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Openings are available, so call now at 251-456-2652. Life Institute Christian School, because our children are our future. Recently involved in an accident or fall and experiencing pain? We're open four days a week, some days 7.30 to 7.30. Call me at 476-PAIN. One call, that's all, to me, chiropractor Dr. James Gordon of the Alabama Injury and Pain Clinic. The choice is yours. Visit KC Photography, serving the Gulf Coast for over 16 years, capturing memories that last a lifetime. Families, children, graduates, weddings, and more. This month's portrait special, 33 photos for only $24.99. Get your pictures back the same day. KC Photography, 235 South Wilson Avenue, downtown Pritchard. Open on Sundays. Call today, 251-452-5200, or book online at kcphotographyandprinting.com. We are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Caps. Let's look here in the Romans, the fourth chapter. Uh, let's move on a little and we'll, we'll deal with this other. In the fourth chapter of Romans, uh, Verse 3, it says, What saith the Scriptures? Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. Now notice, he believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. This was Abraham. Now when we come over to verse 13, it says, For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham and his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now it's not through the law, the old law of works, but through the righteousness of faith. Now come down to verse 16. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is the law, but that also which is the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all. 
Now, it's through grace. See, it's, it's through faith. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. Now, he's telling you something here, that the only way you can enter into the grace of God is through faith. Now, let me give you the definition. The Lord gave me a grace many years ago, changed my life in the way that I look at some scriptures, and the things that Paul said about grace. He said, grace is my willingness to use my power and my ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. Now, see, all I'd have heard that grace is unmerited favor, and it is that. We can understand that. That's true. But the, what the Lord said to me, he said, uh, uh, now, if I'd just been in favor of you being saved, if you could figure out a way to save yourself, it wouldn't help you a whole lot, would it? So grace is more than just unmerited favor. He said, grace is my willingness to use my power and my ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. I saw a cartoon not long ago. This man and his wife showed up in heaven and, and he's talking to St. Peter. And, and, and there was a throne over there and God sitting on the throne. And, and his, <laughs> his wife was lecturing her husband and said, now whatever you do, don't demand what you deserve. <laughs> No, you don't want what you deserve. You want mercy and grace. Grace is God's willingness. Now, here's the way the Lord showed it to me. This was back when, when uh, Jimmy Carter was president. He had made the statement. He said, now, I'm in favor of a certain bill that's before Congress. Now, if they pass the bill and get it to my desk, I'm in favor of it, I will sign it. But I'm not going to be personally involved in lobby for it. And, that, and what the Lord said to me, he used that and said, now, you see, if, if I'd have been willing that the world be saved if they could figure out how to save themselves. See, I'd have been willing. That'd been unmerited favor, all right. But he said it wouldn't have helped them if I didn't get personally involved in it. He said, grace is my willingness to get personally involved, to use my power and my ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. Now, if you'll take that definition with all the things that Paul said about it, it'll change what the Bible's been saying to you for years. Be strong in grace, Paul said. Be strong in God's willingness. It's not enough just to know that God's able. You've got to be strong in his willingness to do it. Now, watch over here. Come over here to the fifth chapter. Uh, Romans verse 1 and 2 therefore being justified by faith you have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ but whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand the only way that you have access into the grace of God is through faith you can get things through faith you can't get any other way you can't get it through the law you can't get it by being good you, <laughs> I was telling the pastor, I was, <laughs> one day I was, I wasn't doing anything spiritual. I'll tell you what I was really doing, I was up in the top of a tree building a deer stand. I'm just hammering away. And the Spirit of God said, the Lord said to me, he said, what some people call faith is not faith at all. Just high expectation based on wrong information. I just laid my hammer down. Sit down. I'm going to listen to this sermon. And he went on to say that how the people believe that, well, well, now, I believe God will do this because, because I, I, I believe I'm worthy of this. One lady I remember said to Brother Hagin, he was telling a story about it, said, she said, now, I, I just don't understand it. She said, Brother Hagin, can you, can you help me? He said, said uh, uh, I'm not a better Christian in this church than I am. And said, not a more spiritual person in this church than I am. But she said, now, when it, when it comes to getting healed, uh, come down with sickness or something, said, said, I always end up having to go to the doctor and have an operation. But said, now, you take my husband's side of the family. And she said, now, we're, I'm faithful to church. I pay my tithes. I do all these things, and I'm always there. And, and said, and then, then here's the husband's side of the family and said, they're not really faithful. They just come now and then. Don't really pay the tithes. They give now and then. Said, but if they ever get sick, they come running to the church, get hands laid on them, get healed. Can you tell me why? He said, well, not knowing any more than you said, I, I, I would say that they're quick to forgive and not hold a grudge. 
She said, well, that's exactly right. Said, they just don't let anything bother them. Now me, she said, I'll tell you, I just can't hardly forgive anybody. <laughs> well, she let the cat out of the bag, didn't she? See, she has high expectation based on wrong information. She believed because she's a good Christian, she's the most spiritual person. She thinks she's the most spiritual person in that church. That God will heal her. She believes she merits healing. She's under the law of works. And the Bible says she's under the curse. Yeah, the Bible says that. Now turn with me to it. I, I want you to see it. I think people think I make this stuff up. <laughs> Go over there to Galatians. <clears throat> In Galatians chapter 3. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 8. <clears throat> And the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel to Abraham saying in thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then they that be of faith are blessed by faithful Abraham. For as many as of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. She believed because of her good works she ought to be healed. And this scripture says she's under the curse of the law. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth those things shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for his written curse to everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now what we need to realize is that what, what God is saying here through the Apostle Paul. Come on over to, to the uh, fifth chapter. <clears throat> Verse 3 says, uh, For I testify again to everyone that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Now he's saying if they're going to do part of the law, if they're going to be under the law, you've got to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect to you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, talking about the law of works, ye are fallen from grace. In other words, you can't enter into the grace of God. So this woman saying, not a better Christian than his church than I am. She got over into the, the, to the law of works. She believes that she's going to get healed by her good works. She's under the curse, and the Bible says she's fallen from grace. She can't reach grace because it's not a faith. She thinks it's merit. High expectation based on wrong information. Had a man the other day to just tell me. He said, oh, he said, I've got all these hip problems and had a hip replaced and all this. And I know, he says, God's able to heal me if I could just get worthy. I thought, oh, there's the problem right there. There's the problem. And I gathered up a bunch of tapes and books and <laughs> I'm going to give them, get them to it. Because if he'll continue in the Word, it'll set him free. See, he doesn't know that Jesus made him worthy. It's by faith that you enter into the grace of God. Faith in the blood of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. With the righteousness of God in him. It's not our righteousness. It's his righteousness, but it's been imputed to us. Now, while we're on that, we're just following the Holy Ghost. That aren't we? You ever wonder why they call a sinner a sinner? It's because he sinned. He's doing just what he does best. And he can't quit. He can't quit. That's why you call him a sinner. Same reason you call a prisoner a prisoner. He's in prison and he can't get out. That's the reason you call him a prisoner. Now see, I was on death row at one time. But they let me out. I was just visiting. <laughs> 
But a prisoner, he can't get out. A sinner is a sinner because he sins and he can't quit. He has no way out. He needs a Savior. So when we understand the law of faith here, you realize that a sinner is just doing what he does best. And he just can't quit. There's no way to quit. But you get over in the New Testament and John said, I write unto you that you sin not. Now he's talking to Christians. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And if we confess our sins, you know, John, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, if you get rid of all the un, what happens? You got righteousness in you. Through the law of faith. Through the law of faith. And that's the only way you can obtain it. See, some people try to get it through high expectation based on wrong information. The just shall live by faith. It's the law of God. Now, Paul said in Romans 8, he said, The carnal mind's enmity against God, not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You can't believe your head what you can believe with your heart. So the, the, the law of God is the law of faith. It is the law of the New, New Testament. And then Paul goes on and turn over there to Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans chapter 10, verse 4, Paul said, For Christ is an end of the, for the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. That ended the law for righteousness right there. For Moses describeth the righteousness, which is the law that the man that doeth those things shall live by them, but the righteousness which is of faith. Now let me stop there and read you again what we read back over here, lest you've forgotten what we read about what it said about Abraham in chapter 4. It said, For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now, when it says his seed, that includes us because Galatians says, the third chapter, I believe, is the last verse, says, if we be Christ, then are we Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So it's through the righteousness which is a faith, that phrase, the righteousness which is a faith. Now, Paul tells you right here in the 10th chapter, verse 6, for the righteousness which is a faith speaketh on this wise. Now first he's going to tell you what the righteousness of faith wouldn't say. Say not in thy heart who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above or who shall descend into the deep that is to raise Christ again from the dead. Now what's he talking about? He's talking about what people say. You've said it and I've said it sometime myself. Lord, just come down and touch me. If you'd come down and touch me, I'd get healed. He doesn't have to come down and touch you. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. He's not coming. He's seated at the right hand of the Father until his enemies have made his footstool. He's coming back to receive the church. But he's not coming to personally come to the earth and do something for you. But now watch what Paul says. He first tells you what it wouldn't say. See, Then in verse 8 he tells you what the righteousness which is of faith would say. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. It's as close to you, he says, as getting it in your mouth and speaking it into your heart. Now, isn't that simple? Now, in the 12th chapter of Matthew, you'll find, uh, I, I believe it's, it's 12th chapter of Matthew, or maybe it's either 12th of Matthew or, or Luke. Jesus said, a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, he brings forth good things. Evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, he brings forth evil things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the core, the center of his being, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. In other words, what's in you is going to come out. You can't hide what's on the inside of you. It'll come out. You know, when they had plane crashes and over in the Canary Islands and... Uh, the, the recorder in the cockpit recorded what the pilots said when they saw this airplane about to hit them. They used God's name in vain and said, he's going to kill us all. 
That's what was in their heart. What's in the heart gets in your mouth. And uh, Jesus, in a discourse, you know, he went on to say right there in that when he was talking about that, he said, For out of the bones of the heart and the mouth speaketh. And he said, A man will give account of every idle word that he speaks in the day of judgment. That means non-working word, words that don't work for you. In other words, you can speak words based on the authority of the word, <coughs> word of God, and it'll work for you. It'll change some situations and circumstances. First thing it'll do is cause faith to come. It'll renew the mind and cause you to begin to think like God thinks. But he said, What saith the righteousness which is of faith, says the word is nigh thee, it's in thy mouth and in thy heart. Now see, they knew that when we were going to school, that if you said it with your mouth long enough, you'd, you'd believe it and it'd, get, it'd become a part of you. You didn't even have to think then. Four times four is 16, you know. You didn't have to sit down and figure it out. It gets in you. It just becomes a part of you. And if the Word is in you, faith is there. Now here's the point I want to show you what Paul's talking about. When we talk about people that don't have any faith, uh, lack of faith is just a symptom. It's not the problem. The problem is lack of the Word abiding in them. Because this Word is filled with faith. If this Word abides in you, faith is there. But you always know where, where people stand when they say, well, yeah, I know the Bible says that, but now here's what I believe. Or here's what happened to me. See, they've cast out the Word. The Word's not their final authority. So they go on talking, doubt, and unbelief, and, and all those things. Now, if you notice here, Paul connects this with that, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You believe with your heart. You can't believe with your head what you can believe with your heart. Now, according to these verses, if a sinner came up here and confessed, Jesus is the Lord of my life, when he said that, the devil was the Lord of his life. But because he based his faith on this scripture and believed it and proclaimed that Jesus was his Lord, all the demons of hell can't stop him from being born again. And that may be the only scripture he knows. But faith for healing, faith for finances, you've got to have the word concerning finances or healing. So you can be highly developed in one area and have no faith in the other area. Because the word wasn't in you. Your faith will never rise any higher than your confession of the promise of God. Now when it says it's in your mouth and in your heart, think with me for a minute. We have two sets of ears. We have the outer ear and we have the inner ear. We also have a middle ear, but the outer ear is for the outer man, the inner ear is for the inner man. It's very simple. Paul said the outward man perisheth, but the inward man is renewed day by day. Now, if you, you plug up your ears and your voice will be louder to you. Why? Because Jesus, you know, when Jesus said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart, bring forth good things. For out of the bums of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Then Paul comes along and says, The word is nigh you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. You put those together and you understand that what you speak out of your mouth is picked up by the inner ear and fed directly into the, what the Bible calls the heart. That's the way you plant the seed of the word. Whether it's God's word or whether it's the devil's word, what you speak out of your mouth is planted Amen. in the heart. And the more, you, now, you know, it, it doesn't happen. You didn't just, don't just say it one time and it becomes a part of you. It's what you say over and over and over. You've heard people say, well, the Lord knows I want to forgive them, but I just can't. How long have you been saying it? Forty years. Worked real good, didn't it? <laughs> if they just said it the other way, they could have what they say. See, they've had what they said for 40 years. It's held them in bondage. But you just turn that around and say it on the positive side. Word is nigh thee, is in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now, when you first heard your voice on a tape recorder, you got embarrassed, didn't you? You said, oh, that's not me. Why the way we've been hearing you all the time? The reason it sounds like you to me and not you to you is because the first time you ever heard yourself totally without her ear. 
Your voice is picked up by the end of your fed directly into what the Bible calls the heart. That's why Jesus said if you had faith as a seed, you would speak it. You would say it. The more you say it, the more you believe it, the more you believe it, the more you say it. Faith cometh by hearing. You speak it to get it in the heart in abundance. Then when it's abundantly in the heart, then you speak things that change situations. <clears throat> you speak words that will change situations. But the first stage of confessing the promise of God is doing very little to change your situation. First of all, it's changing you, changing your attitude, renewing your mind, getting you to think like God thinks. Now remember what God told Joshua. Now, now notice how all these things work together, even in the Old Testament through the New Testament. He told Joshua, he said, let not the book of the law depart out of your mouth. That means keep it in your mouth. Now, that's the word of God they had for that day, see. Keep saying what God said, in other words, that thou mayest observe to do. Now, what's observe mean? It means to sort of see it, doesn't it? In other words, if you speak the word of God, I have given it, it's given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over men, given to my bosom, I have abundance and no lack. My God has met my need. Thank God I have the wisdom of God. Any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, giveth to all liberally, upbraideth not, it shall be given him. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. He that wavers like a wave, the sea driven, the wind tossed, let not that man think that he'll receive anything of the Lord. Well, when you pray that, believe it, release your faith in it, get that on the inside of you. Now, first of all, that is causing you to think like God thinks. Doing very little change your circumstance or situation. But when it gets abundantly in your heart, the more you hear it, the more you believe it. Faith cometh by hearing, right? See, that's what Paul said right here in verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Now, who's he talking about hearing? He said, the word is nigh you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. Did you notice he didn't say it's in your pastor's mouth and in your heart? He said it's in your mouth and in your heart. You believe more what you say than what anyone else says. Now, don't misunderstand me. You get some faith by hearing what your pastor said and certainly gain some knowledge. But if you want to really develop your faith in the specific promises of God, you get those words in your mouth. The more you confess it, the more you believe it. Faith comes by hearing. Now, a psychologist will tell you if a person tells a lie long enough, they'll go to believing it. And after a while, they're telling it for the truth. They'll, they'll swear everything in them says it's the truth. Faith cometh by hearing. Now see, Paul said, so then faith cometh by hearing. Faith in God's word cometh by hearing the word of God. Now the other end of the spectrum is that if faith in God comes by hearing the word of God, faith in the devil comes by hearing the words of the devil. Or faith in the weatherman or faith in the postman would come by hearing what he said. If he did what he, you know... Said, I'll be there at 9 o'clock with the, the mail or whatever. Uh, if the weather forecaster would hit it five, six times in a row, you'd have faith in him. That's natural human faith. But the Word of God, you see, when you talk about the Word of God, you get the Word in your mouth and speak it into your heart. The more you say it, the more you believe it. Now, see, the Word is truth. Whether you believe it or not, it is truth. God bless you. We do appreciate you joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. I trust you've been blessed by the teaching and how that faith works in your life and how to get it to work for you. I mean, your confession will change your life. Now, we have a tape offer this week, and I'm excited about this offer. It's called The Law of Faith, offer number 2246. 2246, The Law of Faith, two audio cassettes for $10. Now, what do we mean, the law of faith? Paul calls faith law. In Romans, the fifth chapter, here's what Paul said about faith and the law of faith. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. In other words, Paul is saying, you don't have access into the grace of God except through faith. In other words, you have to come through faith in the blood of Jesus to have access into the promises of God and into the, the blessings of God. Now, the Apostle Paul said all the promises of God are yes and amen. Paul called faith a law in the third chapter. 
He said, do we then make void the law through faith? He says, God forbid, we establish the law. Now, he's not talking about establishing the law of the old covenant. He's talking about establishing the law of the new covenant. Faith is a law of the new covenant. In other words, under the old law, it was by works of the law, but now it's by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and faith in the covenant of God and the promises of God. So you only enter into it through faith, and that faith comes from the Word of God. Now, in this two-tape series, we talk about how that an airplane wing is designed to produce lift. There's no lift on that wing till it's thrust through the air. The same way the human spirit is designed that when you confess the Word of God, say what God said, it creates faith in the heart. And Paul said faith works in the heart, it won't work in the head. He said the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. It's the law of faith. That's tape offer number 2246, $10, the law of faith. We have a toll-free order line. It's 1-877-396-9400. That's 1-877-396-9400. If you ordered my MasterCard or Visa, you'll get it much quicker that way. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel, we're glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. To order the product offered on today's program, send your check or money order to Charles Capps Ministries. Or to place your order on Visa or MasterCard, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Pritchard. Mobile's new home for news and talk. 660 WXQW. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Bruton, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. God's healing place for those who are ready to give up. Experience spirit-filled and anointed prayer partners as they minister biblical principles from God's Word. Call today. Prayer partners are available now. 504-569-8205 or log on to www.prophetblakes.com to submit your prayer request. Remember, your breakthrough is a phone call away. Prepare your hearts to experience a life-changing anointing. Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. pastors a ministry that reaches out to those who are bound and ministers healing and deliverance. His dynamic ministry touches the lives of people throughout the nation and international continents. God has placed a sure word of prophecy in his mouth. Welcome to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Let's join the prophet. Hello. This is Prophet Robert Charles Blake Sr. Right here in the city of New Orleans. It is a joy, 
of men, of mine, to be able to come into your homes, or wherever you are, your workplace, or wherever you are, and say good morning or good evening. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I do thank God today for this blessed privilege that we share with you. I thank God. I love you so much. And that my heart is that I share Jesus with a dying world, with a sick, with a sick and a troubled world. I take the privilege of sharing the Master. I love you just that much. And I know he's the answer to all of life problems, irregardless to what they are. Christ Jesus is the answer. Now I want you to come go with me into the sanctuary. There may be a word in there in season for you. Come and go with me into the sanctuary. Remember that I love you. I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes this morning uh, from the book of uh, Nehemiah. I just like to speak to you for a few minutes this morning from the book of Nehemiah. Dr. Caesar Clark would call it Nehemiah. Yeah. I said Nehemiah. Hallelujah. In this second chapter of Nehemiah, you find the the basics for our meditation uh, this morning. And uh, beginning at the 16th verse, I'd like to do some expository preaching this morning. And the rulers knew not, that's the 16th verse, whether I went or what I did, neither did, neither, neither had uh, I yet, as yet told it to the Jew, nor to the priests. You know, nor to the mobiles nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Something that God ordered you to do is not to be publicized. For there are times that Jesus said to his disciples, tell this to no man. until after I am risen. Don't tell it. There are visions that God will give you for you to not to tell it or share it with anybody. You ought to keep it to yourself. Nehemiah was using a whole lot of strategy because he knew he had to strategize to build a temple because the enemy was against the temple. And uh, whenever anybody 
is against the house of the Lord. They are against the people of God. Nehemiah was a very smart individual. Oh, very, very smart. He knew that uh, there were some things that had to be kept between him and God. Some things are just not to be revealed to anybody, not until the appointed time. You must always keep that in mind. He, uh, he was brought back to Jerusalem after having heard the uh, devastated news of the walls being torn down. And um, he, his heart struck sorrow. For and um, he asked for letters to go back to Jerusalem to build. Now, it's hard enough to build, but when you got to rebuild, some of us need rebuilding. Our walls, our walls are down, and they, they need rebuilding. The walls of praise. The walls of loving God again. The walls of brotherhood. The walls of stewardship need to be rebuilt. Nehemiah, I love him because his book is a book of service. If you want to know uh, the true essence of the book of Nehemiah, read it and you'll find out it's a book of service. Many people don't want to serve. Uh, they find it belittling to serve. But service is an exalted thing. One cannot be belittled because he serves. A service exalts a nation. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Nehemiah had a book of service. And uh, he, he went back to Jerusalem to work. A lot of preachers, a lot of ministers feel like that uh, work is off limits for them. I don't need to work. I'm a preacher. I don't know who you think you are. I don't know who you think you are. You don't work. The Bible says neither should you eat. You ain't got no business having a seat at the table. If you're not a worker. One thing we're going to have to learn, and that is this, uh, to serve God, you got to keep a praise spirit. I see too many sad looking faces, looking all sad and all down and out. I don't care what have happened to you. When you come into the house of the Lord, you ought to be ready to shout to the rooftop. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. You don't look that good. 
Don't none of us look that good. Hallelujah. Look all right, but you don't look that good. Be sitting up in here looking like somebody want to see you. Don't nobody want to see you. If people got any sense at all, they come here to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Nehemiah, Nehemiah had to have letters of authority. First of all, he needed a letter to cross the river. It was a river he had to cross. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to do a work for God, you're going to have to be ready to cross the river. See River means crossing over. See, going over. And sometimes you got to go over you to get to what God wants you to do. Hallelujah, somebody. Go over. Go over your important attitude. And realize that you're not that important. realize that it's more it's more it's better to to serve than to be served hallelujah if you want to be if you want to be great let him be your servant want to be chief let him be your servant some of us don't even open our mouths to let the Lord know that I appreciate being here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ain't no way in the world I can come into an atmosphere like this and sit here looking all cute and everything. All quiet. Your mouth all twisted and everything. Open your juicy mouth and let the devil know I'm here to praise. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Why are you coming up in here and said quiet? Why don't you stay home? Stay home if you want to be quiet. Stay in your own bedroom. Don't come out. Stay there. Don't come here. We don't need no quiet person here. We need a noise maker. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. In that uh, 17th verse, and then said I unto them, ye see the distress that we are in. You know, how Jerusalem lies waste and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the walls of Jerusalem that we be no more a reproach. Let us build these walls. Good God Almighty. Let us move the reproach from us. Let us, let us build up these walls come let us do it now prove that they were not selfish they was soliciting a help they didn't take an attitude I can do it myself I don't need nobody to do it but you know when you're doing the work of God you don't hinder anybody from doing something. Because you don't know what kind of burden God has laid upon individuals' heart. And when they volunteer 
unto help. Or if you're calling for help, receive those who come willingly. So you've got to have a willing heart and a willing spirit. You don't want anybody working with you if their spirit is not right. I, 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 I just want to talk to y'all just for a few minutes. You, 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 don't, you don't need bad spirits to help you to do a good job. If you're going to do a good job, you need a good spirit. A God-like spirit. Hallelujah. Because what? We're doing a job not for Blake's, not for individual, but we're doing a job for God. In order to be a joyful experience, to be able to share with my brother and my sister to come in and let us build together. Because see this thing, oh, we're going to shout. And the shout is not for one person. It's for the whole congregation. Everybody ought to be able to shout together. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I don't like, I don't like some of the spirit I see. You know, you can't work here now. You cannot do this. We don't need you now. No, uh -uh. you're not a part of this. How in the hell should not a uh, whoever be not a part of where you got your nerves from? Everybody's a part of the work. Everybody should be a part of the work. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. But come in with the right spirit. Stomp your feet and say, yes, Lord, and yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. <sighs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. That's what's wrong now. We got too many bystanders. Too many people standing by to see how it's going to work out. Yeah, instead of getting in there and helping to work out, we're going to see how it's going to work out. I'm going to see how they're going to be able to do this now. Hallelujah. If God is in it, there's no feeling in this thing, baby. If God says yes, it's yes, brother. Whether you like it or not, it's still yes. If God is with me, it's got to succeed. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Oh. Got too many excuse makers. I can't do it today. I'm not going today. I'm not there today. You ought to knew that when I hired you. Don't come give me all these excuses. You don't want to do my job? Sit down and let somebody else do it. Someone else can take your place. You got to always remember this. Anybody can feel your place. But can't nobody feel your disposition. Your position can be filled. But your disposition is who you are. And can't nobody be you but you. I'm, big. I'm not going to beg anybody. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Nehemiah is a book of service. And we've got to get about serving. And stop waiting around for somebody to pat us on the back. All right, sugar. I ain't no kissing nobody. You come on and do your job. You help somebody. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Never mind you knew the walls gonna have to be built. This was not a one man's job. And those who was destined to help in building the walls, they had already been tested through that prior life. Because when you get a bunch of people on there that are unprayerful, they can be more of a hindrance than they can of help. If you want to do a job for God, find a praying person. A sincere heart. A holy desire. I think I need to talk here this morning. Why? We're building something for the kingdom. Nobody gets any glory out of this. All the glory goes upstairs. This is not for you to get glory. This is for upstairs. Heaven's going to get the glory. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Too many babies. Too many little-minded people. Too many selfish people. Too many people want it their way. It's not your way. It's God's way. Hallelujah. And if it's going to be right, it better be God's way. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I hope you heard your words. Today, as we shared with you, arise and build. I hope it was a word in season for you. I hope it fit just what you needed. I hope and pray God. Now you must call us and let us know how you enjoyed the message. Call us now. Let us hear from you. We love you. It's why we're glad to be able to come into your homes or wherever you are and share Jesus with you. Because he's the best thing that we know, that the world know, that the world will ever know. Jesus is the best thing that could happen in your life. And I thank God for it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father God, touch everybody that's watching me right now. Reach out and touch them. Touch their families. Touch their health. Touch them now. In Jesus' name, touch them right now. I reach out, Father, and I lay my hand on them by faith. Right now, I bring healing to their bodies, to their mind. And do it now in the mighty name. Of Jesus Christ, our Lord. You got the right to me. Let me hear from you. Let me hear from you soon. Write to me. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for He has anointed me. He has anointed me. Come into your home. Come into your mind, your thinking, your soul. Come into you. Share Jesus. I love you. You go in peace. Next week we're going to see you. Don't forget to call us today. Burn the lines up.
Call us today. Let us hear from you. Everywhere, call us today. God bless you. God keep you. Are you struggling to keep the deliverance God has released upon your life? Call today to order this prophetic message, How to Maintain Your Deliverance. Prophet Blake shares detailed instructions on maintaining deliverance as he exposes the hand of the enemy in the lives of God's children. Order your copy today, 1-800-633-4274 or log on to www.prophetblakes.com to submit a prayer request. Thank you for your support. Robert C. Blake, Senior Prayer Center. God's healing place for those who are ready to give up. Experience spirit-filled and anointed prayer partners as they minister biblical principles from God's Word. Call today. Prayer partners are available now. 504-569-8205 or log on to www.prophetblakes.com to submit your prayer request. Remember, your breakthrough is a phone call away. Become a covenant partner with Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. Tap into the prophetic anointing upon his life by sowing a monthly seed of $25 or more. All faithful partners will receive a monthly special moments message prepared by Prophet Blake's. Also enjoy your personalized frame photo of the Prophet interceding for his faithful partners in ministry. Thank you for your sowing into the Prophet's life through your love and faithful support. The vision is unfolding as God uses Prophet Blake's to minister healing and deliverance to the nations. Thank you for tuning in to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Robert C. Blake Senior Ministries is supported by faithful covenant partners around the world. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, bringing you nothing but the best in anointed teaching, preaching, and gospel music. So if I don't know how to operate in faith for my finances, you know, nobody won't talk about faith in the finances, but I need faith for my finances. Because every month, there's people calling me about a bill. If they're not calling me, it came in the mail, so to me, that's just like calling. Welcome to Power in the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly, Dr. Henry W. Roberts the second, I am the founder and pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. Right now, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air, and after this, I'm going to come back and let you know how you may obtain a copy of today's message. So until I should see you again on this air, God bless you and keep you. Get ready to be blessed. Open your Bible. I'm not going to be too long today, I don't think. You know, we've been talking about this is the year the Lord's release. Last week I gave you six biblical usages for money. First thing I told you was number one, to support the kingdom. 
Number two was to pay your tithes, pay your, pay your support the kingdom. Number two, pay your taxes. Because Jesus said pay your tithes and your taxes too. Number three, money is, God gives us money so we can pay our personal debts. Amen. Personal debts. The Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. So God wants us to be financially responsible. You don't go out and make bills and have no intention and don't pay them. That's how people ruin their credit. And, you know, and in this country, praise God, you've got to have credit to kind of just move around. You may not want a credit card, but you need one for times like when you need to rent a car or book a hotel room. That don't mean you got to use it. If you just pay it off before it comes due, it's like you never had it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So, so you got to protect your credit because the Bible talks about how a good name is better than silver and gold. Now, don't, don't go for any of these trick games or gimmicks. I guess I'm right here because it's the Holy Ghost. Well, people tell you they can repair your credit. Credit cannot be repaired. You can rebuild it, but you cannot repair it. Did you get that? Some of y'all didn't even write that down. You'll pay a financial advisor $150 just to tell you that. So don't let nobody tell you or charge you for rebuilding your credit. They can't do it. That's a gimmick. That's game. Way to take your money. And that three hundred fifty or hundred fifty dollars they gave you gave them, you could have sent it on the bill. Yeah. But don't go out and make bills. You wouldn't want nobody to come get your money and don't want to pay you back. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Some of y'all will make the news around here and buy some money on the drug on. He owe me fifty cent, man. I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> So you don't do that. He wants us to pay our debts. Oh no, everybody say, oh no man, oh, man. Nothing, nothing but to love it. See, I really believe God wants to move us into a place of debt freedom. See, because it, it's stuff on your heart and your mind. Man, I just stepped into something. It's stuff on your heart and your mind you want to do and accomplish and achieve. But one of the main reasons why you can't do it because you're so much in debt. Good secret, good secret. When he gets you out of debt, don't go back in. Okay? Now, I guess I'm just here. We're going to attack this thing. Look, on the credit card, this is how you start getting out of debt. You find first the smallest bill that you have. Pay that one off. A little bit out of time, but pay it off. When that credit card or whatever that is gets paid off, keep, try to keep it active, but don't use it unless it's extremely necessary. Then you go and attack another bill. Some bills you're going to have for a little while unless you get what they call a windfall or some kind of financial miracle or you come into an inheritance, you know, like house notes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a house cost $100,000 except something happened for you supernaturally. God bless you. It's going to be unlikely that you'll be able to just go in there and just drop $100,000 at one time. We believe it can happen. Amen. But see, you got to have, that's where I'm going, hopefully today if I get enough time, about your faith to make that thing happen. See, somebody say, faith is my trigger. Faith is my trigger. See, because I could come here and teach you, I'm already in my message, every week, uh, every week, week in, week out, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we can come here every day of the week if you want to, but if you don't believe anything that the preacher, you watch on television, listen to the radio, or sit under that ministry is saying, then how many know you can't have what they're talking about? Somebody say, faith is my trigger. I'm going somewhere. But so you want to work on that bill. When you get down and pay, then you're going to attack your another one. Don't try to go at the big ones. That's right. Amen. That's right. I, mean, I got Bible for bad. Though your beginning be small, your latter end should greatly increase. So, you, you know, I know you need Dillard's, J.C. Penney's. Yeah. Belts. Yeah. Somebody, even Kmart got credit card now. Don't they? Oh, they got rid of it? Yeah, they used to have one. They did have a credit card at Kmart a little while back, I can remember. It, it was amazing to me. Oh, y'all going to get full credit on him? <laughs> Mr. Sam Walton. But you attack those bills that you can see and handle. It, it's like when your faith is learning how to operate in faith, it's like this. You have to set obtainable goals. You don't go out talking about you in faith, believing for a million dollars, and you couldn't believe for a hundred thousand. See, 
Some people think faith just grows automatically. But faith has to be processed through. That's right. See, so I, I'm processing now getting out of debt so I can live my dreams. Now it's going to take discipline. Everybody say self-discipline. Self -discipline. To move into this arena. Because now all of my bad compulsive buying habits, I have to discipline them. So no longer can I just go to the store and just go on a spending spree or spend money that I don't have. Write this down. Credit is spending money that you don't have. See, when you're flowing and using credit like that, then you really got to have faith. Because you just spent some money that you didn't physically have. And by the 30th, the 28th, the 15th, or wherever the due date is, your faith had to manifest that payment. So if I don't know how to operate in faith for my finances, you no, know, nobody won't talk about faith in their finances, but I need faith for my finances. Because every month, there's people calling me about a bill. If they're not calling me, it came in the mail, so to me, that's just like calling. So from one period of time to another period of time, I got to release faith to meet that need. Now watch. If you already know everything you got to have, let's just do it real quick. Just a quick, quick sketch of a budget. Light, gas, water, rent or mortgage, car payment, lease insurance on the car, then insurance on your life. So we already talked about seven categories of things that every month I got to be releasing faith for. So, so now you understand, get Hebrews 11 and 6, it's like just somebody, y'all looking at me like he ain't gave us no scripture. I'm, I'm talking scripture. But Daphne, I'm talking scripture. I'm talking scripture. All right, read it. Hebrews 11 and 6. There it is up there, but I'm going to let you read it. Ready? Read it. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I, you have to live a lifestyle of faith on purpose, Robert. I have to get up every morning of my life knowing that God is going to meet my need. Now, some people are stuck at just getting their need met. But I want to move into another arena. I want the desires of my heart. And I can have them because he said if I delight myself in him, he would give me. See, so, so most folk stuck on, you know, you heard this, the Lord promised to meet your need. He promised you some other things too. But all the gifts and the promises of God are received through faith. Somebody say faith is my trigger. All right, watch this. Let's, let's do this real quick. Come on. So we worked on them bills. So each one I accept obtainable goals, even with my faith. Let's say, I don't know. You want to move towards this owning the car you always dreamed about. But notice what I said. You want to move towards it. So what kind of car can I drive now? So I have to set my faith on obtaining what I can obtain now. Because now faith is. So now watch. Once I get this one, I got to act like this one is the one I'm dreaming about. The house, if I'm believing God for a bigger house, Steve, the, the house that I'm in now, I got to treat it like it's already the mansion. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Get in position. Come on. Yeah. See, so, so now what am I doing? Write this down. I'm focusing my faith. So because faith is a go-giver. Yeah. It, it has to have something that it goes and get. Uh -huh. It's like a golden retriever. I shoot it, but the dog go out there and get it and bring it back to me. Watch, if the dog got to go out and swim in the lake, he going to get it. 
He had to run through the woods, run the deer down. He's going to show me where the deer is. I turn them loose, they're going to take me to the coon. Them beagles going to jump them, them, squir them rabbits and them squirrels every time. My faith is my golden retriever, man. It is my go-getter. Come on, say it. My faith, my faith is my go-getter. Go now do this, do this. Faith is, faith is my trigger. Click, click, faith click. Is my click. See? Because I could teach you from now that Jesus come. But if you don't believe nothing I'm teaching you, you can't receive it. Come on, say faith is my trigger. Come over here, Hebrews. Y'all don't believe me. Let me show you this. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to go and dive right on in it. Y'all, we're going to read those first couple of verses now. We're going to take our time with it because, see, it's going to be, I'm going to drop something so heavy on you in a few minutes, I'm going to have to leave. I'm, I'm serious, because cause I'm going to need your spirit man in a certain place to even to receive what I'm saying to you. Write this down. There are three dimensions to your spiritual diet. The Bible says, as babes desire the sincere milk of the word. So milk is for babies. He said, but meat is for them that are full age. That means they have matured. But then there's revelation. Revelation knowledge is for them that spend time with the Holy Ghost. Now, we can, we, we can regress it just like we progressed it. Because what is milk but petrified meat? Milk is meat before it's meat. It has all the protein, calcium, niacin, all of the beneficial things that a steak has in it. And we know this process can be reversed because now they got these machines like the, the ninja and, and the, 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 the juice makers where you put solids in it and it, and it puffs it and it turns the solid into a liquid. So then what was solid became liquid. Watch it though. That means what was liquid, liquid became solid. Think about your human anatomy. You was liquid before you was muscle and bone. Before you got birth, water had to break. Come on, let's read. Watch this now. Take your time with it. Don't rush. Ready? Read the first verse. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of an inner into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. But for unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not come from him, not in the faith. Now we're going to stop because everybody's not reading. Faith comes how? So without faith, it's impossible to please God. But in order for me to get faith, I got to read this Bible out loud. Because faith comes how? Faith comes how? So this is not a reading drill. I'm not trying to find out how, you, how good you can read. I'm trying to teach you how to operate in the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing. So when I read the word out loud, I get faith for what I hear. Now say this with me. The Bible is God speaking to me about me. So right now, when I'm reading this, this is God personally speaking to me. We're not just reading the Bible. We are reading the Bible, but we are reading what we could know as the Word of God. So when I read the Word of God out loud, I'm hearing the voice of God. So now you see why it's imperative that I always take time to read the Bible out loud because I want to hear my daddy talk to me. 
Many people are misguided because their daddies never talk to them. It's some confused young men and women because their daddies never talk to them. So when I open the Bible and I read the word out loud, my heavenly father is talking to me. Show you how powerful the word of God is. Go back two more chapters. Go to chapter two. I want you to read verse one and verse two. All right, y'all got it? I say you got it? All right, ready? Read it. There's an angel in the Bible. There are several angels, but one that they, they name all the time. Yeah. Whenever God got ready to send a message to mankind, he used this angel named Gabriel. Amen. Gabriel's name means messenger. So if you name your child Gabriel or Gabriel or Gable, you just called him a messenger yeah. or her a messenger. So don't be surprised if they grow up and start preaching. Amen. You spoke it.